Greetings, and welcome to this brief introduction to Plato's Republic Book 5. I'm Keith Whitaker. Book 5, in particular the end of Book 5, is the point around which the entire Republic turns. In Book 5, the city reaches its climax. It is completely ordered. It is completely just. Yet at that very same moment, the city is eclipsed. Justice and the just life are eclipsed by an even brighter light, the philosopher. Everything in the second half of the Republic, from Book 6 to Book 10, is seen in the light of philosophy, the city, the education, virtue, other cities, poetry, and the gods. Justice and the just life yield center stage. Now the philosopher rules. How does this turn come about? Not by Socrates' choice. At the end of Book 4, he was ready to complete his task by reviewing the inferior cities, those lacking in justice so that he and Glaucon and Adamantus could adequately judge the superiority of the just city and the just life to all others. But at the beginning of Book 5, Polemarchus initiates the demand that Socrates explain the curious community of women and children that he mentioned along the way. Perhaps Polemarchus wondered if Socrates had in mind some warmed-over version of the traditional military arrangements of Sparta or Crete. Socrates hesitates, but all the listeners, including Thrasymachus, then vote for him to lead the discussion in that direction. In other words, the dialogic city votes to elect Socrates, the philosopher, as their ruler. They require him to rule, foreshadowing the city and speech's relation to the philosopher king. As a result, Socrates introduces three waves, as he calls them. The first wave is that the most just city will educate the guardian women, the same as the guardian men. The second wave is the community of women and children itself. Socrates argues that for the sake of their education, justice requires that the women guardians be freed from child rearing. So the rulers will arrange marriages, really one night stands, for the purpose of producing the best offspring. Those offspring that are allowed to live will be reared by nurses and in pens, he says, in common, apart from their parents. The class of guardians will consider themselves one family, calling those older than themselves mother and father, and those younger, son or daughter, and people of the same age, brother or sister. They will share as much as possible pleasure and pain in the same things. At this point, Glaucon wants to know whether such a city is even possible, and if so, how. Socrates defers this question to talk about how the guardians will wage war. True to form, they do so in surprising ways. They will bring their children to battle, to become trained in the sight of blood. They will care nothing for hostages, or even their own lives. They will be supremely reasonable. The first two waves thus prepare the third wave, the biggest, the most laughable, and most offensive of them all, the rule of the philosophers, the most womenly men, and the most private, whose activity is more akin to weaving and cooking, both of which divide and collect natural kinds, than to war. Again, this is the most striking thing about Book 5, about its place in the Republic. All of a sudden, with the third wave, the philosopher takes the place of our object of interest, our focus, away from not only justice, but also the most just life. How ironic of Plato to erect as ruler the philosopher king, this bizarre invention of the unpolitical Socrates. Yet Socrates does seem serious about why a philosopher's rule would be best. The reason points to the fundamental difference between the philosopher and other people. The philosopher loves the truth. He refuses to accept the appearance of truth, which is what opinion is, to the truth itself. But opinion makes a city a city, a community. No city loves or can possess as a city the truth. So, the philosopher is not really part of the city. He is, as it were, above the city, its natural ruler. But he certainly won't seek to rule it. He must be forced to rule by the people who love opinion and know not the truth. Only in the best city could this happen. And even then, it's not likely. Thank you for joining this brief introduction to Plato's Republic, Book 5. I'm Keith Whitaker. Thanks so much.